ethnography obviously is very important. Uh, we have various types of examination, like we can ha do a transabdominal sonography, transvaginal sonography, transrectal. Now we have 2D, 3D, 4D, color Doppler, power Doppler. But uh, today we will discuss very basic sonography, how to do a normal pelvic sonography. First we will do a transabdominal sonography. It is uh, very important that we understand what we are doing before we start the examination. When we take the patient on the bed, we should first make her very comfortable and we should try to ask her her history, why she is here and then we should start with our examination. For pelvic examination, when we uh, ask the patient to lie down, we should cover her up with a nice uh, cloth so that she feels secured and if it is a male doctor who is examining her, we should see to it that there is some lady attendant or her relative over here. So uh, like I have put this marking, I hope this marking is seen over here. Uh, how can we show this marking? I want to show uh, how आपका नाम क्या है उषा क्या उम्र है आपकी 38 इयर्स और पीरियड्स कैसे हैं आपके रेगुलर आते हैं एक डेढ़ साल हो गया कुछ दवाई ली थी आपने जिसके कारण पीरियड्स नहीं आ रहे हैं बीमार थे कभी पोस्टपोनमेंट करने के लिए दवाई वगैरह ली थी तो आप इसीलिए आए हैं कि एक साल से पीरियड्स नहीं आए इसलिए ये फाइंड अप अच्छा आपको कुछ बच्चे हैं दो बच्चे हैं उस समय पीरियड्स रेगुलर आते थे सो वी हैव अ 38 ईयर ओल्ड लेडी ओवर हियर हु हैज नॉट गॉट हर पीरियड्स सिंस लास्ट वन ईयर एंड शी इज वरिड एंड हर यूरिन प्रेगनेंसी टेस्ट इज आल्सो नेगेटिव इनिशियली शी हैड रेगुलर पीरियड्स एंड शी हैज टू चिल्ड्रन सो so we have made her comfortable and we have covered her properly. I, you can see that I have put a marking R and L. R represents the right side of the patient and L represents the left side of the patient. We have done this so that we know that right side structure would be represented on the right side of the screen and left side of the structure would be present on the left side of the screen. This is important because when we select the probe, like when we want to do transabdominal examination, obviously we prefer curvilinear probe with a frequency here that we are going to use the frequency is 1-7. Uh, so this is right for this patient. So selection of probe is important. Now we can see a marker over here. This mark On this marker we put our thumb so that we know that this marker would always re be representing the right side of the patient on the right side of the screen so that there is no confusion obviously now we, this bladder should be adequately full when we start the examination to do a trans abdominal sonography uh, over distended uh, bladder will also not allow the structures to be seen properly and we will get false measurements right from uterus to endometrial thickness and if it is not distended properly then also the visualization may not be that good. So when we start the examination we place this uh, probe on the pubic symphysis like this and we try to bring the area of interest in the center. The angle should be appropriate because if it is too broad then also the clarity of image is not there. Before we start we have set the preset on gynec preset. Nowadays machines come with the preset so ideally we should be using the preset meant for the examination. Uh, if harmonics are to be used and there are various settings on the screen uh, all this setting should be done before we take the patient. 
here we have done the settings properly now after placing the probe on the pubic symphysis we first try to see the vagina this uh, white line which we can see here is the vagina and from here we try to take the upward sweep so that now we have come into the uh, cervix area and we go further ahead to see the fundus now so this is a transverse scan which we are seeing we can see the left ovary coming up very nicely this is the anechoic area which is the follicle which may be the growing follicle we will try to see uh, see the right ovary as well see uh, before we do a transvaginal sonography it is mandatory to do a transabdominal sonography because there are times that you may not be in a position to see uh, ovaries if they are very high up uh, i would like to put color over here to trace the ovary the right ovary we all know that the ovaries are in relation to the internal iliac so here now we will take the measurement of the uterus uh, the measurements are taken from the fundus to the cervix full length full length here so this lady is a multi paras uh, women 38 years old so this size of length of the uterus seems to be fine now when we want to take ap diameter we take at right angles to this measurement so and co uh, in transverse section we just turn the probe 90 degrees to whatever we have done till now and at the level of the cornua we are going to measure the transverse diameter no no transverse diameter is like this and for endometrial thickness we can see here that the uterus has got a homogeneous ecotexture anterior myometrium and posterior myometrium are well seen and if possible we should take measurement of uh, Uh, this anterior myometrium also because then we can rule out uh, adenomyosis if the thickness is more this is absolutely normal thickness anterior and posterior in a previous talk given by dr doke he has mentioned how to take all these measurements and we are just trying to demonstrate uh, these uh, measurement now we want to take endometrial thickness so um, now this is a very thin endometrium she has not had a period since one year so um, maybe um, there is some hormonal issue no no this 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 is the black area adjacent to the endometrium this is the halo which is there uh, this this is the interface between the myometrium and the endometrium which should not be included in the measurement now we just want to measure this white line sorry can we clear it now yes so so this is the anterior myometrium just 1 mm there is fluid in the endometrial cavity and again uh, we can see the posterior myometrium also seems to be around uh, 1 0.6 mm so and this is the follicle anechoic ideally uh, we should not separate the examination of pelvic from abdomen 
uh, we should be seeing kidneys also because urogenital system develops together so if at all there had been any congenital abnormality of uterus we would have loved to see the kidneys also but here it seems everything normal so now we would uh, stop our examination here for the abdomen and do a transvaginal once we'll ask the patient to void urine and come back so uh, thank you so much and uh, one thing uh, till uh, it is taken over by the next speaker i can tell one thing that we should be very sure whether the uterus is antiverted or retroverted if the fundus is uh, near the bladder is towards the bladder arrow if this this is the fundus and this, this is near the uh, bladder it is antiverted and if this fundus falls down we call it a retroverted uterus uh, we should also see that uh, the angle which the cervix makes with the uterus so that we know that whether it is antiflex retroflex it helps uh, to understand various problems like retroverted uterus may cause pain okay thank you dr omkar we are uh, done with transabdominal sonography uh, case demonstration by dr sandeep sir